Hello and welcome to the Columbia Daily Tribune's Behind the Stripes football webcast. This is Tribune Sports Editor Joe Wall Jasper along with Tribune football beat writer David Morrison. David, since last we met with the camera, big doings around the Missouri football. Um, they go down, we, we didn't have this last week, so to fill you in, I don't think you depend on this for all your football news, but they go <laughs> down, they beat Vanderbilt, and that was kind of the least of the excitement. Last week they go, they win at number seven ranked Georgia, 41-26. But it was sort of a complicated victory because they do lose James Franklin to a shoulder injury in the fourth quarter. Um, he's going to be out apparently three to five weeks, which would put him coming back maybe for the last two or one games of the season if good things go well. Um, first of all, what did you learn uh, about Missouri maybe that you didn't know from the victory over Georgia? Um, I learned that this is a pretty resilient team because, you know, in the first couple weeks, they had kind of adversity. You know, they had, like, being up by only two against Toledo in the third quarter mm -hmm. or being down to Arkansas State in the second half adversity. But this was, like, full-on adversity. The had, real thing. <laughs> they had yes. to face against Georgia and Sanford Stadium because, I mean, first you lose your best cornerback. Mm -hmm by E.J. Gaines in the second quarter, and you have to have two freshmen fill in for him the whole rest of the game. Then you're up 18 points at the half. Georgia makes its comeback. The stadium's deafening. They get down by two points. And then right at that point, you lose your starting quarterback and your best offensive player. You know, for, and, and you have to throw in Matty Mock, who's a redshirt freshman with barely any experience at that point. And then not only did they win the game, they won it going away. You know, they scored mm -hmm. the last two touchdowns and made the result even more lopsided than I mean, even the stats indicated. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just showed that this is a really resilient group. And, I mean, Gary Pinkle's been saying it all along. It's a special group. It's a resilient group. They battle all those sorts of things. But you didn't really see the proof in the pudding, as it were, until <laughs> Saturday. Mm -hmm. I thought uh, another thing is their defense, it was kind of hard to tell how good that defense from Missouri was because they never really totally stopped anyone, but they would sort of just – Force the occasional turnover, you know, get a little tough in the red zone. They were just, they were basically winning on offense more than defense. But I thought they impressed me. This was going against, you know, a very legit offensive line. You know, they made a really good quarterback look pretty ordinary, I mm -hmm. thought. Maybe he just had a slightly off game himself, but they, they contributed to that with that pass rush and some pretty good coverage. So I was pretty impressed with the Missouri defense. Um, they did get run over and kind of run through some in the third quarter as that lead evaporated but they weren't getting much help from the offense at that point either. They were getting uh, some three and outs there on offense. So um, that was maybe something I learned about them I didn't know. And I think, talk about resiliency, and I would agree, I thought they really handled the situation as well as you possibly could when Mock had to come in the game. I thought Josh Hansen called things just about as well as he could have. Um, the guy's gotta be terribly nervous at that point in the game. And so they let him kind of get his feet wet, and uh, he let a wide receiver throw the biggest pass, you know, initially at least. But yeah. then you didn't totally um, hamstring him, and you let him throw a deep ball to DGB also. That was a big play to kind of put the game away. And another thing was I think Missouri, I continue to be pretty impressed by their offensive line. I thought they were pretty physical. They were able to run the ball when they really needed to, and when Georgia knew they were going to run the ball mm -hmm. at the end, which we've seen from them in a few games, where at the fourth quarter they don't necessarily – run the ball consistently throughout the game, but in the fourth quarter when they need to, they did. So lots to like about that game. The one obvious mitigating factor, which is why I thought that, you know, even after the game there wasn't like a super party atmosphere from Gary <laughs> Pinkle was, okay, now what? This yeah. guy who, I mean, James Franklin had been fantastic all year. Now he's gone. Now you got the guy who, you know, in the spring you thought might be your best quarterback, but then pretty convincingly as the regular season went along, um, you went from thinking you would give him a series to thinking we really can't afford to even do that. And now he's your guy. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think Missouri needs to do with Matty Mock as a quarterback to keep on winning? I mean, I think it's going to look about the same as the 13 plays he ran against Georgia. I think there's going to be a lot of bubble screens and a lot of short pass routes and then a lot of read option and a lot of speed option too because he can use his legs and you know like you said the offensive line is playing really well so there's going to be holes there's going to be seams and then the three running backs Missouri has as well are also really good so I mean mm -hmm. he can utilize them in the option game and you know that that's going to get predictable after a while though you can't do that for 80 plays in a game so I mean they will probably open it up down the field to him a little bit I would assume you know everybody keeps saying Pinkle and Andy Hill and Josh Henson they're all saying we're going to run our same offense I I mean, I'm a little skeptical about that because this is a guy who they're, they're probably not opening the entire playbook to. And even when he went in Saturday, you know, I think it was 
Henson said that he said, he, like, you know, um, Andy Hill took Matty Mock aside and said, okay, pick the plays you mm -hmm. want to run and, <laughs> and let's do that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I have a feeling they'll open it up more and more to him as the weeks go on, but I can't see them running the entire offense with him this week against Florida. But still, I mean, they're going to have to open it up a little bit more down the field so it's not all just check downs and screens and stuff like that. Yeah, I would think maybe you would cut down a little bit. Not that they ran it. Well, kind of varied from game, game to game, but I don't know that I would run a lot of empty backfield stuff with him. A, because because a younger guy, and it's kind of going to be mass confusion out there for him, I don't think he's going to be able to make those all those reads mm -hmm. to where it's going to make that much difference. And I think you're going to want to, and B, you're going to want to protect him because now you're running a little low on quarterbacks anyway. Um, so that might be part of it. I'd l I think they'll probably lean on the running game a little bit more. I think that throughout the course of the season, they're pretty balanced between run and pass, but a lot of that is they're running a lot in the second half and they got big leads. So I think mm -hmm. while games are competitive, they're a little more pass heavy. I would think you might want to flip that. And if you're throwing 40 passes a game, maybe get down to about 25. But I would maybe differ with the idea of throwing a lot of bubble screens. From, that, from what we saw, at least against Georgia, those were some of the dangerous, most dangerous passes you can throw mm -hmm. because they're really crowding those receivers. And if they do get intercepted, they're going to be a pick six. I would almost be more tempted to, when you do throw, get down the field, let your 6'5 guys either catch it or bat it down. Um, that might be a better bet to me, uh, maybe a more high risk, high reward <laughs> thing, because he's not a guy who's thrown a lot of passes in games. He's not a guy that you really know whether he's going to throw a lot of interceptions or not. I mean, scrimmages he threw a few. Mm -hmm. So I would be more tempted, I think, to put the game in the hands of your receivers. Um, and the other thing is, uh, He's going up against a Florida defense that's really good, but a Florida offense that doesn't score a lot of points. So it's not like Missouri's going to need to win this game in a shootout, this mm -hmm. first one anyway. So right. you know, if, you can get a, if you can get a few cheapies and just throw a few jump balls and get some touchdowns, that might be enough. Yeah, and I mean, the best thing he has going for him is the 10 other guys on the field because you know, the line has been proven, the running backs have been proven, the receivers are all big and good, like you mm -hmm. said. I mean, LaDamian Washington especially has been elite these last couple right. weeks. I mean, he's probably probably near the top of the SEC and receiving in conference games only. So, I mean, yeah, just lean on the guys that have been so good for Franklin. And I mean, Mock's, I don't want to make it sound like Mock can't throw five yards in front of him. You know, he's obviously capable mm -hmm. at throwing. I mean, he set all sorts of records in high school and stuff like that. So, yeah, lean on, lean on what you have, you know, the sports structure that's already there. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, is Missouri still a contender in the SEC East? Um, with Matty Mock as a quarterback. I think I was to the point where I was saying definitely yes if James Franklin was a quarterback. Do you say still yes with Matty Mock as a quarterback? I'd say yes with a big but because uh, I, I was like you, you know, if, if they go in and beat Georgia like they did and James Franklin's still healthy, you've got to think they're one of the top SEC East contenders. But I mean, just the, the fact that they're breaking in a new quarterback, one who doesn't have near the experience that Franklin has, and one who's, I mean, probably gonna have some growing pains here in the next couple weeks, kind of makes you think that they might take a step back. I mean, I, I feel like if they can get out of this Florida, South Carolina, you know, two game stretch here at home with at least one win, they can stay in the conversation. Because they'll be three and one at that point. They'll have Tennessee, who they should probably beat. And you know that that'd be four and one with three games to go, and the possibility of getting James Franklin back pretty soon. So I feel like if if they can if they can kind of hold serve here in these next couple games and come out with at least one win, I feel like they can still stay in the SEC East picture. Mainly because the East is such a mess right now because nobody really seems to want to take right. control of it. Right. I think I think it's possible you could win the East with two losses. It just maybe come down to a tiebreaker. I think Missouri probably is is still a factor because I think sometimes we get a little myopic about what's going on with Missouri. Florida's got a ton of injuries, too. Florida's on well, their second-string quarterback, although mm -hmm. you could argue he's better than their first-string quarterback. But they're losing guys left and right, too. They just lost their number one running back. Right. They've lost their best defensive lineman. I think, you know, Will Mustang's talking about this being the most injuries he's ever had. So it's not just Missouri that are having yeah. these problems. So, I mean, there's a pretty winnable game at home against another ranked opponent and one of the maybe the top three contenders. So then if you beat them, then you've beaten two of the top three, and then it's just a matter of uh, South Carolina, which has a SEC loss already. So mm. everybody's got their problems, and I think if you go, if you would be able to, to somehow get through the season with a couple, of, even with a couple of losses, you would probably still be in the hunt. Mm -hmm. All right, well, tune in next week when we'll have a lot better idea what Missouri can do with Matty Mock as the quarterback, and we'll discuss the Florida game and look ahead to homecoming against South Carolina.